What is up guys? Welcome back to the third part of this series which is on behavior trees. In the first part of this series, we understood what a behavior tree is and why we need it along with all the concepts behind behavior trees. In the second part, we started building a behavior tree from scratch in C++ using a library called behaviortree.cpp. That was a simpler example. In this video, we will build a more involved example of a behavior tree for a robot application in C++. But before that, let's talk about what we already built and what we will build today. This is the behavior tree we built in part 2 of this series. Talking about the features of this behavior tree, this behavior tree had one sequence node and four leaf nodes. One of the leaf nodes was a condition node and the other three were action nodes. That's it. So it was simple and we were able to build it. Now this is the behavior tree we will build in this video. This one is a little more involved and we will understand how to create this one from scratch. This behavior tree is for a grasp and place robot. Of course, this is a dummy application and we will just build this behavior tree with dummy functionality in software using the library behavior tree.cpp again. Also, this behavior tree was actually discussed in the first part of the series. So if you don't understand what's happening in this behavior tree, please check out the first part of the series where I discuss in detail about this behavior tree and also general concepts in behavior trees. Okay, now talking about this behavior tree, this one has a couple of fallback nodes, one sequence node, and then multiple leaf nodes where you'd see both condition nodes and action nodes. So what's happening in this behavior tree is the robot is supposed to find a ball in its vicinity, approach the ball, then grasp it, and then approach a bin where it's supposed to drop the ball and then place the ball there. If this can happen, great. But if something fails here, then the behavior tree asks for help, which will be a dummy functionality for human intervention. So that's the idea behind this behavior tree for a grasp and place robot. As you can see, this behavior tree is more involved than the previous example. Here you have fallback nodes, here you have sequence nodes, here you have multiple action nodes, multiple condition nodes. Additionally, we will also pass information between different nodes. And that was also not present in the previous video. So here, what we'll do is one of our nodes, which is for find ball, will find the ball. So basically the location of the ball, and then it has to pass this location to the next condition node and action node, which is ball close and approach ball, right? Because in an actual functionality, you will have to pass information from one node to the other so that other nodes can process this information. So again, find ball will find the location of the ball and then ball close condition node will actually check if this location means that the ball is close to the robot. If not, then we go to approach ball and then approach ball needs to process this information, which is the location of the ball to actually make the robot move and approach the ball. One more thing to keep in mind here is that we will only use synchronous nodes because each node needs to give an output for the next node to actually work in this behavior tree, right? For instance, if we haven't found the ball, there is no point in approaching the ball. So all the nodes will be synchronous in our case in this example. So making this behavior tree should be a lot more fun because we're talking about more concepts and the behavior tree is a little more complex than the previous one. So I think you know the drill by now. To make this behavior tree project, we will make a new directory and it will have three components. One will be a CPP file, which will be the actual functionality of all the leaf nodes. One will be your behavior tree XML file, which defines the design of the behavior tree, including every node. Could be a sequence node, could be a fallback node, could be an action node, could be a condition node, any node is present in this behavior tree XML file to define the entire behavior tree. And then the third one will be CMake lists, which is all about building the project, right? So let's begin again. So let's start doing this like we did in the previous video. First up, let's create a directory for this project. I'm naming this directory grass ball robot demo. Okay, so we are in this directory. Let's go to VS code and start making everything we need. Okay, so we have VS code open. The last time we did this, we started with our main CPP file to basically add all the functionality for our leaf, then create the behavior tree in software. And after that, we made the design in our XML file. In this video, this is the behavior tree we are trying to make. Let's actually do something different and start from our XML file. So we define the design first, and then we will go to our CPP file to basically add all the functionality. This is our XML file for our behavior tree. Now, like the previous video, this is how we start making our main tree. So we have our behavior tree tag inside root. And after this, we start defining our behavior tree here. If you see the root node of this behavior tree is a fallback node. And hence we have the first one in the behavior tree, which is a fallback node. 
This fallback node has two children, right? One is the sequence node, which is all about the functionality of the robot. And the other one is the action node, which is ask for help. So let's focus on the functional side of the robot, which starts with the sequence node. This is your sequence node, right? Let's name it robot function. So that is the name of the node. Now under sequence node, we have four different fallback nodes and each fallback node has two children. Let's focus on the first one right now. So this is the first fallback node, which is all about finding the ball. So it's called find ball fallback. It has two children. One is the condition node, which is called ball found. And the other one is the action node, which is find ball. Now this was about the first fallback node. Let's go to the second fallback node, which is about approaching the ball. This is the second fallback node, which is for approaching the ball. That's why it's called approach ball fallback. It has two children again, right? Ball close and approach ball. Now let's go to the third one because I think you know how I'm doing this. This just is redundant. The third fallback node is for grasping the ball. So it has two children. One is the condition node, which is ball grasp. And the second one is the action node, which is grasp ball. Next one is for approaching the bin. So I've used the same scheme here. Two children, bin close, condition node and approach bin, action node. Now after that, again, the last fallback node, which is about placing the ball. Ball placed condition node and place ball action node. So we are done with the functional part of the robot here, right? Now we have to go to ask for help. So let's do that. Ask for help here is an action node, which is at the same level as the sequence node. So we have ask for help here. That's how we actually create our behavior tree. So the design of the behavior tree is actually done now. Let's now move to the CPP file. Now let's create functionality of all the leaf nodes in our CPP file, right? That's what we've done in the previous video. And that's what we'll do in this video as well. Okay, so this is our CPP file where we define the functionality for each leaf node and then create a behavior tree factory and then basically register all these nodes so that our behavior tree, apart from having the design, can also become functional and do what we want. So let's start with that, like what we did in the previous video. If you've seen the previous video, you know how we go about doing this and let's do it. Let's import everything we need. We need iostream for standard stuff. We need chrono because we will add delays. These two imports are necessary for using our behaviortree.cpp library, which we've installed already in the previous video. And we're developing everything based on that. It's super convenient to use chrono literals namespace so that we can add delays easily. Let's define the functionality of this behavior tree based on different subtrees. We'll start with the first subtree, which is about finding the ball. Then the second subtree for approaching the ball. Then the third one for grasping the ball. The fourth one for approaching the bin and the fifth one for place ball. And after that, we will work with ask for help. Okay, so we have placeholder positions for each of these. Now let's start with find ball subtree. For each condition node, we'll use a function and for each action node, we will use basically a class which inherits from sync action node like we did in the previous video. So these are the two ways we will create different nodes. And in our demonstration here, all the condition nodes will return failure so that the fallback node for the corresponding subtree then ticks the action node and then the action node computes where we'll just add a delay for dummy functionality and then it will return success so that the subtree is actually successful. This subtree has two leaf nodes, right? One is the condition node to check if the ball is found and the second one is the action node to find ball. Let's start with the condition node which checks if the ball is found. So this is the placeholder function. Let's add functionality which will basically say that the ball is not found and then it will return failure and then it will go to find ball and then the behavior tree will basically use find ball to find the ball where we'll just add a delay and then return success. So we actually have the functionality for our first leaf node, which is ball found. Let's go to the second leaf node, which is an action node. So we will create a class which inherits from sync action node in behavior tree. Let's do that. So this is our placeholder. Let's start with making a constructor here. This is our constructor. And then we need to override the method tick, right? So here in take, what we'll do is we'll sleep for three seconds to basically mimic functionality. And that will be of course dummy in this case. And then we'll print ball found and return success. So this is your tick method. We sleep for three seconds. We then print ball found and return success. So we are actually done with the first subtree here. Let's now move to our second subtree. For the second subtree, and in fact for all the subtrees for the functional part of this behavior tree, which is just about the robot, we actually have to follow the same pattern as the first subtree. So let's be a little quick and do that. The first leaf node in the second subtree is basically checking if the ball is closed. So this is the one we have. Let's print and return failure so that we actually go to the action node. 
Okay, so this is returning failure. So the behavior tree will tick the action node. Let's make the action node, which is again using the class sick action node. This action node is called approach ball. Let's make a constructor here. We have a constructor. Now let's also override the method tick. So this tick method will sleep for three seconds because we are mimicking the idea of approaching the ball, which will take three seconds. And then it will print ball approached and return success. Now let's move to the next one, which is grass ball subtree. Like before, we have a condition node, which is about checking if the ball is grasped. So we have a function which is ball grasped. It will print ball not grasped, return failure, so that the behavior tree will take the action node, which is grasp ball. Let's make a class for grasp ball now. Let's make the constructor. We have a constructor. Let's override tick. So this tick method will also sleep for three seconds. And then we print ball grasped and return success. Now let's go to the next one, which is approaching bin subtree. Here too, we have the first condition node, which will check if the bin is close. The bin is not close, so we'll return failure. And then we go to the action node. This action node is called approach bin. Let's make the constructor. So we have the constructor. Let's override tick here as well. This tick does the same. It sleeps for three seconds to basically say that there's some dummy functionality which needs computation. We then print bin approached and then return success. Now let's go to the last one, which is about placing the ball. The condition node is basically about checking if the ball is placed or not. So we have a function called ball placed. It will print ball not placed and return failure. So then the behavior tree takes the action node, which is for placing the ball. Let's make the action node class now. This is the action node class. Let's make the constructor. This is the constructor. Let's now override the method tick. So as usual, this tick will sleep for three seconds to basically mimic functionality and then print ball placed and return success. So at this point of time, we basically have the left part of this behavior tree, which is basically the robot behavior complete. Now, if the robot behavior fails, which basically means if one of the fallback nodes returns failure, then the behavior tree will go to ask for help, right? So let's make the action node ask for help using a class. This class, as usual, inherits from BT sync action node. Let's make the constructor. We have the constructor. Now let's just override tick again. So this is our tick method. Now here, what will happen is if this action node is actually ticked, we've just added this dummy functionality where it prints asking for help waiting for 10 seconds, and then it sleeps for 10 seconds and then returns success, which for our case basically means 10 seconds was enough to add some manual intervention and then the behavior tree was successful. Of course, this is dummy functionality and that will not be the case in the actual scenario. But the idea is you can use this behavior tree for whatever you want. If this node is ticked and this returns failure, then basically the behavior tree will fail. So what we're doing now is returning success here just for our sake. So at this point, we actually have a behavior tree design ready, but we are missing something, right? We have to basically create the behavior tree using factory. So let's make int main. Okay, so we have a main function ready. Let's actually set up the behavior tree using factory. So this is our factory object. Now we need to start registering all these leaf nodes. So let's do it subtree by subtree, which is basically how we design this entire functionality anyway. The first leaf node is ball found, which uses a function. So let's register it as a simple condition because it is a condition node using a function. So you have your ball found function registered as the node ball found. Let's now register find ball action node. So this is how we register our find ball action node. And we have the subtree, which is about finding the ball registered. Now let's go to the second subtree. For the second subtree, the first leaf node is ball close condition node. So, so you see this error because we made a small mistake while defining our ball close method. Going to our ball close method, this does not take any argument. So it should be fine now. Yeah, it is fine now. So now let's register the next one, which is our action node approach ball in the subtree. So we're done with two subtrees. Now let's go to the next subtree, which is about grasping the ball. The first one is our condition node, which is ball grasped. The second one is our action node, which is grasp ball. Moving on to our fourth subtree, which is about approaching the bin. The first leaf node is the condition node, which checks if the bin is closed. So that is bin close. And the second one is approaching the bin action node. 
So we are left with one more subtree and then one more action node. The next subtree is about placing the ball. It has two nodes again. One is the condition node which checks if the ball is placed. So we've registered ball placed. And the next one is an action node which basically places the ball. So place ball. Now we're just left with one action node which is ask for help. So with this ask for help is also registered. Let's now create the tree and then tick the tree. This is how we create the tree. You know this drill from the previous video. And then for executing the tree, we need to tick it. We are just executing this tree once or ticking this tree once for dummy functionality and for showing the behavior here. But of course, you can tick it again and again and again, depending on what your use case is, if your nodes are synchronous or asynchronous, but we'll get into that later. So at this point, you have the functionality of all your leaf nodes registered. You have the design set up in your XML file. All you need to do is build the project and then run the project to see the magic happen. We've of course not started passing information from one node to the other right now. We'll do that once we'll build this project and see it running. Let's first build it and run this project and then we'll move on to passing information and setting all of that up. To build the project, we need to make a CMakeLists file, right? So here is our CMakeLists empty file and it should look like this after population. The project name is grasp place robot demo or grasp and place robot demo, whatever you like. Here, the package we are using for the library is behavior tree CPP version three. You must have installed it already if you've seen the previous video where we do everything from scratch. And then the executable is bt underscore demo dot CPP, which has the functionality for all the leaf nodes and we've created the tree, we've supplied the XML file. Now we're ready with this and then we can build this. To build the project, let's make a new build directory. So we are in our build directory inside the project right now. Let's do CMake. Okay, now let's do make. Okay, so our target is built. So our project executable should be ready. Yes, it is. Let's just try running it. Ball not found. Ball found, ball not close. Ball approached, ball not grasped, ball grasped, bid not close been approached ball not placed and then been approached oh wait okay so the last one should be ball placed so i think we've done something silly here approach bin ah uh, of course so what we've done here is instead of approach bin this should be place ball right because that is the name of our class. Okay, so let's now make it again. That was just a small issue and then run it. Let's run make. And then let's just do this again. Ball not found, which is the first condition node of our subtree. Ball found, then ball not closed. So we have the second subtree. Now we've gone to this third subtree, which is ball not grasped, then ball grasped, bin not closed been approached then ball not placed ball placed so essentially the left side of the behavior tree which was all about robot behavior was executed now what if this part of the behavior tree returns failure so let's do this in this case let's return failure for one of the fallback nodes so that the right part of this behavior tree will be executed and the robot will ask for help or the behavior tree will ask for help in this case let's just return failure for approach ball approach ball is this so here we return success, right? Let's return failure and then build the project again. Now run the project. Ball not found. Ball found, ball not closed. Ball approached, of course, we haven't changed the print statement, but after ball approached, it returned failure. And then we look at asking for help, waiting for 10 seconds. And this will return success and the behavior tree will basically end there. So we've actually seen this behavior tree working. We started building it from scratch. We've used fallback nodes, sequence nodes, condition nodes, action nodes, and it is working. Now, the next step of this video is us passing information between different nodes. What we'll do now is add one more feature where the find ball action node actually finds the ball 
which means it has the location of a ball. We will hard code that value right now, but that will essentially help us understand how to pass information from one node to the other. So find ball will have this value of the position of the ball, and then it will pass this information to ball close and approach ball so that ball close can check if the ball is actually close and approach ball can actually approach the ball because without knowing the location of the ball, it cannot approach the ball, right? So that is what we'll do right now. To do that, let's understand the concept of ports and behaviors. So talking about ports for transferring data from one node to the other. Ports are ways to establish data flow where data is flowing either to the node or from the node. So you can actually consider the port to be like a pipe where data is actually going inside or outside based on what you want to do in that specific node. Now let's take this example of this behavior tree which I've taken from the website behaviortree.dev. Here there's one node which is think what to say and then there is another node which is say something. Think what to say node actually wants to think and create a string and that string should be passed to the next node which is say something which will print this. Now in this example what we see is something called a blackboard. Instead of one node passing information directly to the other node, what happens in this case of behavior tree is that this information or this string is actually put in a place called a blackboard. A blackboard is basically like a memory location or a table where all information can be put and we can also get information from that specific memory location or the table. So each node in this behavior tree actually has access to this blackboard. So what's happening here is think what to say will make that string and then write it to the blackboard and then say something will read it from the blackboard. One other thing to consider here is that ports can have different names based on the node because the name of the port can be specific to that node. So in this case, think what to say has a port called text, which will be an output port and say something node will have a port called message, which will be an input port. But the blackboard has something called a key value pair where the key decides the location of that message and value decides the actual value. So in both these nodes, think what to say and say something, the key value has to be the same so that the port is connected to the right place in the blackboard. So in both the cases, the port is different, but the location, which basically says the key in the blackboard is the same, which is called the answer. Now, this was a general idea of making ports for data flow between nodes. Translating this to our example in this video, we previously discussed that find ball wants to send information to ball close and approach ball nodes. So what will happen in our case is find ball will write information to this blackboard using a specific key and then ball close and approach ball will read information from this blackboard. So essentially find ball needs an output port and then ball close and approach ball need input ports. Let's make an output port for find ball and input ports for ball close and approach ball. In our example, all the port names will be the same, but you can have them different because that is a property of the node and it does not need to be the same. But the key value in the blackboard should be the same for all the three, right? Because that is how the port will get information from the blackboard. So in our case, the key value for the blackboard will be called location. Let's start building that because once we start building that, you will understand a lot more while we do it. So we'll have to make changes to both the XML file and our CPP file. To add ports for find ball, ball close and approach ball in our code base, let's start with the XML file where we need to make minor changes. For find ball, this is how we define the port. Let's call the port ball location. And the key for the blackboard will be called location. And this is how we define the key. Now, similarly, we need to make ports for ball close and approach ball. So in our case, we will have the same names ball location port. You can have them different. It doesn't matter, but just for brevity and ease, I am making this the same. So this is all we need to do to change the design of the behavior tree so that now the three nodes find ball, ball close and approach ball have different ports. Now we need to go to our CPP file to do two things. One, decide if this port for each node is an input port or an output port. And second, actually use these ports to send information from find ball to the blackboard and read information for ball close and approach ball nodes using these input ports. 
this was our CPP file, the first thing we need to do is create an output port in the node findball. To do that, we go to our node findball, which is this one. And here we need to make a static method called provided ports. And this is already decided by the library behavior.cpp, of course, so that the node knows about these ports. So this is what we added here. The output port is called ball location, which is what we decided in our XML file as well. Now here you see, we have a vector. You can give a string, you can give an integer. You can also actually make custom types, but that's not what we'll cover in this video. But my point is you have a vector because from this node, which is find ball, we will send a vector of integers. Let's say the location of the ball is 10, 20, 30. So that is what we'll send as a vector to the blackboard, which also means we need to include vector in our file. So we can now use vector data structure here. Now we've made provided ports method, but the next question is how do we use it? To use this port, this is what we'll do for an output port. We want to send information using our tick method, right? Because when this node is ticked, that is when we want to send information, which is the location of the ball. So let's first make the location of the ball. I'll use a vector here. So I've made a vector called ball location, which is initialized to the value one, two, and three, or you can have 10, 20, 30 or whatever. And then we will send this information. So we will send this vector ball location. It is extremely simple. This is what we do for sending information using this port, which is an output port. We have the name of the port, which is ball location. And then this ball location is a data structure we created with all the information. And this is all we need, but there is a catch here. If you're using ports in a node, you have to change how the constructor is made in that node. So here the constructor now needs to have a slightly different signature. Instead of just one argument, this constructor will have two arguments. And this also needs to be passed to the base class or the parent class. So this is what we need to do to use an output port for this node. Now, the next thing is we need to use an input port for the other two nodes we wanted, right? Ball close is the next node we want to change, which will now also have an input port. Now, this node does not inherit from sync action node. So this has a slightly different way of setting things up. For a function based node, what you have to do is you have to first change the argument which you pass. Right now, this has no argument, but the argument you need here is this. After this, you need to create a message which will be of type BT optional. And then also using templates, you need to make this use vector. And then you have to use your input port, which you decided in your XML file. So instead of using set output for an output port before, we need to use get input for this input port. So this is your input port. And this is how you connect it to the port, which is called ball location. So now you have your port and you can actually read message using this. So this line is actually reading information from the port. And we had to pass an argument to this function because we now need access to the tree and using self here is how we get access to the tree. And then we can use get input port. So at this point, we actually have the message. We also need to check if this message exists and this is how we do it. If message is none, we will throw a runtime error saying missing required input message. But if the message exists, what will happen is in message dot value, we will actually get the vector values we passed, which is one, two, three from find ball. So let's just print out the values from the vector. For that, let's just use an iterator. Auto. Let this name be position coordinate. And we get access to the information using dot value. So message dot value. Here, what we'll do is we'll just print elements of this vector one by one. And this is how we did it. We just added one blank between different values or different elements of the vector. And now we will just print that this value is far away because we want to actually say that the ball is not closed, right? So instead of saying ball not closed, we can just say the location is far away. So we actually are done with our node ball close. We also need to use this value in our other node, which is approach ball, right? And approach ball inherits from sync action node. So we will actually create an input port like we did in case of the first one, which was find ball. There we had an output port. Here we'll have an input port in approach ball. 
So here we'll use the same idea that we need to make the method called provided ports and say that this is the input port you need. So this is what we added in approach ball. And now in our tick method, we will use our input port. Like we did for find ball, the interface remains the same. So we will have a message of type vector. And then we use get input to actually get our message because there's an input port here. Now we'll check if this message is none. If it is, we'll throw a runtime error. This was similar to what we did for find ball node, right? Now, if it's not none, we will print different elements of the vector we got using this message. So this is exactly what we did for find ball node. Now that's all we need to do because after this, we are sleeping for three seconds and saying that the ball is approached and then we either return success or failure. So we had changed this to failure to demonstrate what happens if one part of the behavior tree fails and then we go to ask for help. Let's move this back to success. We're just left with one thing, right? We need to change the signature of the constructor for this node like we did for find ball. So this is our approach ball node. This is the constructor. We need to add configuration to the signature of the constructor. This changes to this. And then we need to pass this to sync action node parent. So I think we are done and we should have no errors now. Let's just try it out right now. Like before we are in a build directory for this project, let's do CMake. Okay, let's now do make. So it looks like everything is working. Let's now execute. Ball not found. Okay, so we have our, hmm, it works. So ball found sent one, two, three using the port to the blackboard. And then here, find ball said that one, two, three is far away. That's what we wanted. And then the next one, which is approach ball says one, two, three, and then ball approached. So we effectively passed information from our node find ball to the blackboard and then ball close and approach ball read information from the same key value in the blackboard and use this. We clearly see one, two, three for ball close and approach ball. So this is how we pass information from one node to the blackboard and then read information in the blackboard from another node. And this is what we wanted to demonstrate using this video. So wrapping this video up, we started building this behavior tree from scratch. And then we added this functionality of passing information from one node to the other using something called a blackboard. Now you can do a lot more and you can make your custom data structures to pass information from one node to the other. Also in the last two videos, we use synchronous nodes because the behavior tree demanded for that but you can use asynchronous nodes as well. So I hope this video helped you in understanding how to make a behavior tree from scratch in C++. We use the library behavior tree.cpp and then we added all the functionalities from scratch. We created a design in our XML file. We made all the leaf node functionalities in our CPP file. We built the project. We saw how information can flow from one node to the other. I highly recommend checking out behavior tree.cpp project because it is a brilliant open source project and there are more nuances in the tutorial on that website. It's called behavior tree.dev. So I'll see you in the next video. Love to know what you think. Bye-bye.